In the last video, we saw our first strategy for training generator networks. Before we move on to autoencoders, let's ask ourselves what we can do now that we have a generator network. The first thing we can do, of course, is sample points that look like they came from the same distribution as our data. But another thing we can do is interpolation. If we take two points in our latent space and draw a line between them, then we can pick evenly spaced points on that line and decode them. And if the generator is any good, this should give us a smooth transition from one point in our instance space to another, where all of these points look like valid instances. We can also draw an interpolation grid. In this case, we just map the corners of a square lattice of equally spaced points to four points in our latent space and decode these. If the latent space is high dimensional, then most of the probability of the standard multivariate normal distribution will be near the edges of the radius 1 hypersphere and not in the center as it is in one, two, or three dimensional multivariate normals. High dimensional MVNs look more like a soap bubble than like the dense point cloud we're used to seeing in low dimensional visualizations. For that reason, we often get better results if we interpolate along an arc over this hypersphere instead of along a straight line. This is called spherical linear interpolation. Interpolation experiments like these are a great way to help us get to grips with the structure of the latent space that we have learned. So what if we want to interpolate, not between random images in our latent space, but between instances in our data set? It's possible to do this with a GAN trained generator, but to make this work, we first have to find our data in the latent space. Remember, during training, the discriminator is the only network that gets to actually see the data. We never explicitly map the data to the latent space. We can tack a mapping from data to latent space onto the network after training, as was done for these images. But we can also learn such a mapping directly. As it happens, this can help us train the generator in a much more direct way. Such a mapping would give us two extra features. It would allow us to map the data into the latent space and to use the latent space to manipulate it. We'll see an example of that later. And it would also give us a dimensionality reduction. The latent space representation of our data has fewer dimensions than the original representation, so we can treat this as a kind of nonlinear PCA. We'll focus on the perspective of dimensionality reduction for the rest of this video to set up basic autoencoders, and we'll show that we can get a generator network out of these but it's a bit of an afterthought. In the next video, we'll see how to train generator networks with a data to latent space mapping in a more principled way. Here's what a simple autoencoder looks like. It's a particular type of neural network shaped like an hourglass. Its job is just to make the output as close to the input as possible. But somewhere in the network, there is a small layer that functions as a bottleneck. After the network is trained, this small layer becomes the compressed, low-dimensional representation of the input. Here's the picture in detail. We call the bottom half of the network the encoder and the top half the decoder. We feed the network an image from our dataset at the bottom and it produces an image at the top. And at the start of training, these two look nothing alike. We compare the output image to the input image to give us a loss and this loss we backpropagate to train the network. We call the blue layer the latent representation of the input. If we train an autoencoder with just two nodes on the latent representation, then we can plot what latent representation each input is assigned in the latent space. If the autoencoder works well, we expect to see similar images clustered together. For instance, smiling people versus frowning people, men versus women, and so on. In a 2D space, we can't cluster too many attributes together, but in higher dimensions, it's easier. To show what this looks like, we trained a small autoencoder with a latent space of 256 hidden units. Here's what the reconstructions look like after five epochs. After 25 epochs, we start to see more detail in the faces and a little bit more color. After 100 epochs, people are becoming recognizable. And after 300 epochs, these are the reconstructions we are left with. A lot of the detail has disappeared, but the basic structure of the faces is there and properties like the facial expression, the gender, and the age of the subject are easily recognizable. One thing we can do now is to study the latent space based on the examples that we have. For instance, we can see whether smiling and non-smiling people 
end up in distinct parts of the latent space. We simply take a small amount of instances and label them as smiling and non-smiling. Here we have 20 of each. And if we compute the means of the two resulting clusters in latent space, we can draw a vector between them. We can think of this as a smiling vector. The further we push people along this line, the more the point that we then decode will result in an image of a smiling person. And this is one big benefit of autoencoders. We can train them on unlabeled data, which is always cheap to acquire, and then use only a very small number of labeled examples to annotate the latent space. Here's the algorithm written out. To make somebody smile or frown, we take their image x, we encode it into a latent vector. To that vector, we add or subtract some proportion of the smiling vector, giving us a new point in latent space, z smile, and we decode that point to give us x smile, a picture of the original person but smiling. Here's what that looks like for some of our data. The reconstruction of the original image is in the middle. To the right is what happens when we push people along the smiling vector, and to the left is what happens when we subtract the smiling vector. And with a bit more powerful model and some face detections, we can use this kind of trick to see what some famously moody celebrities might look like if they smiled. So that's autoencoders. A versatile model that can do different things for us. If we keep both the encoder and the decoder after training, we have a data manipulator that we can use to make people smile, for instance. If we keep only the encoder and ditch the decoder, we get a dimensionality reduction function. We can use the latent space representations as the features for a model that only works well on a small feature space. And if we ditch the encoder and keep the decoder, we get a generator network. Now, we don't know beforehand where in the latent space the data is going to end up. But after training, we can just check. We train an autoencoder. We encode the data to latent variables z. We fit a multivariate normal distribution to this set of points z. We sample from the multivariate normal distribution. And then we decode the sample. This is just like the generator network we saw earlier, except that the input distribution is not a standard normal distribution, but a specific normal distribution covering the place where the latent representations ended up after training. Here's what that looks like for our autoencoder. The blue points are the latent representations of the data after training the autoencoder. And here we've plotted just the first of the 256 dimensions. We fit a multivariate normal distribution to this, and we then sample 400 points from it. And these are the red dots in this picture. If we then decode these new points, we get some generated faces. It's not quite as convincing as the style again, but then we only used a very small model with very little training time. This has given us a generator, but we have very little control over what the latent space looks like. We just have to hope that it looks enough like a normal distribution that our MVN makes a good fit. In the GAN, we have perfect control over what our distribution on the latent space looks like, because we can freely set it to anything. However, there we have to fit a mapping from data to latent space after the fact. We've also seen that interpolation works well, but it's not something we've specifically trained the network to do well. In the GAN, we should expect that all latent space points decode to something that fools the decoder. But in the autoencoder, there is nothing that stops the points in between the data points from decoding to garbage. In some sense, we're lucky that interpolation works at all. Moreover, neither the GAN nor the autoencoder is a very principled way of optimizing. Previously, we set up an objective like maximum likelihood and then derived a way of optimizing for it, either directly, analytically, or indirectly, as in the case of expectation maximization. So is there a way to train for maximum likelihood directly? The answer to all of these questions is the variational autoencoder, which we'll discuss in the next video.